everybody, this is a new video uh, I created for uh, my character design class that I'm teaching. Uh, we're designing the Three Musketeers. Okay, so we came up with the... This is the final project that my students are working on. I always like to work on these projects myself to keep practicing, stay fresh, you know, and it's, it's these sorts of things that give you an idea of how well you're doing, how well you're transmitting it. Uh, in this particular case, we're going with, we're designing the, the characters of Alexander Dumas, the Three Musketeers, right? And the most important thing is to portray within the body language, the costume design and everything, the who these people are, okay? That's the key takeaway, that's the key, that's the through line, something that's going to guide you through. Make sure you're portraying who this person is. I don't want you to design a musketeer or a captain of the guard or whatever, but a specific person that works as a musketeer, okay, and how you communicate their personality uh, is how effective your design is going to be. I explored a couple of styles, like the one you saw in the beginning or the ones you see on screen right now, and I wasn't really very happy with how it was coming along, you know, obviously. Uh, I did a gender bend for D'Artagnan, right? And here's a cleanup version of the line art, but I wasn't too happy, you know? I was getting the... the personality coming through. I mean, uh, I was happy there, but in, in, in terms of the of the style that I was working in, I wanted something more cartoony. I mean, I designed or the redesigned the the people from the game Clue last last time I taught this class. And um, I was very happy with that and I wanted to try something different. I wanted something more more based in simple lines. I wanted something that had a bit more life to it, you know, more stylization. You know, the others were, were good, I guess, but I wasn't happy with them, you know. Like I said, you could see who the characters were, the Athos, Porthos, Aramis, and D'Artagnan, and with the body language, you know, you portray, this is Athos right here, and who he is, he's a divorcee that, that is very grumpy, he's an, a bit of an alcoholic, and he, he, clo he closes himself off, he doesn't want to get hurt again, you know? That's why he's wearing that cape on top of himself, that's why he's on guard, you know? He's ready to strike at you if you offend him or if, if you make him angry. Trying some alternatives for the hairstyle for D'Artagnan, and, like I said, pushing, pushing the shapes, pushing the lines. Uh, obviously refined the, the other characters and started working on, on the final line art. In this case I used uh, one of the brushes from Kyle Brush called uh, Rough Comics 2017. Uh, it's very cool, like I said, it's got tooth, it's got... Uh, it gives you an interesting, traditional looking line. You know, kind of like a pencil, but it's digital, and it's which is is great. Uh, another thing that we did for this particular project is that I had my students do an investigation of how their favorite character designer or artist works, and uh, some of them came up with a few key takeaways. I mean, the, some of them work in this type of line, some of them work in grayscale and then add the color. Uh, a lot of my students don't do that, so uh, it was this particular project is a good platform for them to try out that technique, okay? And I didn't really have a specific character designer that I was emulating at the beginning and that's where I think uh, I was failing. Um, but then I, I remembered this character, arti this artist that I like very much called Enrique Fernandez. He's a Spanish artist. Uh, he's the guy behind Brigada, which is a particular comic 
or a comic series or a graphic novel series and his work uh, with shapes, with line, with color, with texture uh, is, is really inspiring and really amazing. If you haven't checked them out, you can look at the description. I'll, go, I'll post a link to his website. And he even has a, a channel here on YouTube that you could check out. He shares a bit of his uh, process on video. Uh, I went over some of the things he does and uh, trying to see, okay, what is it that he does that I want to apply for this particular character design? And I felt that the texture and the, the, the shading, rendering that he does is something that I wanted to apply. Okay, uh, here I'm showing the base colors. This is basically what I did for the clue characters. It's, it's a very similar process, but then after defining the base colors, you start adding the rendering and the shading using multiply layers, overlay layers, and uh, that's just basically how that works, you know? I, I saw how his how he did, uh, I think it was a warrior, a female warrior, or like a viking or something. And um, it was really cool. Like I said, um, I was happy with the shapes I was working with, happy with how the colors were coming out. I went to uh, color.adobe.com to find some reference for the colors. Here I started shading or adding the, the shadows with a watercolor brush from Kyle Brush again called a Broad Washer, I think. And it gave me, like I said, it gives you texture, it gives you personality, it gives it a bit of a traditional look with and still be digital so it's still editable and doesn't matter how many mistakes you make, you can keep fixing it or control Z and uh, backtrack until, you, until you're happy. Anyways, I was happy with the expression on their face, their body language, the design, because you can go into a design or into a character design with the information you have in your head, okay? And you think, oh, okay, he looks like this. He wears a bit of a tunic, has a hat with a feather, the cross on the tunic, and that's it. But going into Pinterest, going into Google, finding a reference from other interpretations of these characters, since they're so old, they've been done several times. And then you go into the specifics of the, of the attire for the pants, for the boots, you know, all sorts of boots that you could find. Uh, I found a reference for the cape that Athos is, wor is wearing uh, from uh, a costume design that I found on Pinterest that I was like, that's amazing, that's, that's what I'm going to use for, for this particular design. And also trying to communicate, you know, that Porthos is uh, a dandy, that he likes to wear fancy stuff, that he likes to have a good time, you know, the La Dolce Vita. And Aramis, he's a, a devout. Uh, I mean, he has a is a strong relationship with with God. He's uh, he was part of the seminary, I think, or he went to seminary. But his love for women and scheming and drink uh, gets the better of him, I guess. You know, and so you could see him. I, the pose I wanted to convey is him giving the condolences to the recent widow and he's like, whatever you need, I'm here, you know. And by whatever he means, whatever. And, um, I don't know, and for D'Artagnan, like I said, I wanted to do the gender bend because that was another thing that the students found that one of their characters, character designers did. It's like that they did the gender bending and they, I've tried to do that several times. As, a, as an exercise, and it's a pretty cool exercise. Anyhow, this is the final image. This is the final lineup. Okay, it's a great exercise. Find characters you like, find popular characters, and do your take on them. Okay, focus on the shapes, focus on 
on the personality. Who is it that you're drawing, okay? Here are more videos that I've done on character design and things like that. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. Uh, stay tuned for the new videos and let me know what you think. Okay, bye-bye.